Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to talk about scheduling tasks in Spring Boot. So today's session is really meant as a quick intro to how you can schedule tasks using Spring Boot and nothing else. So if you're looking for something like quad scheduling and the like, then we're going to keep that for a later video. And Spring Boot offers us everything that we need to run simple tasks. So that can be something like heartbeats to make sure that the application is still alive or you can perform housekeeping jobs during the night as well as backups if you want. I'll leave the timestamps over on the screen so you can just jump around to the part that's most interesting for you. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the code. So I'm in the IDE right now and I've created a simple Spring Boot project using the Spring Initializer. So if we peek over here, you can see that there's really nothing fancy in here. All we need is the Spring Boot starter dependency and that we already have. Uh, that's pretty much it. So let's start to add some code. So let's open the application that has been generated. Uh, that of course would already work, but it's a little bit boring. So we start with developing the first job, which is gonna be a heartbeat job. So let's call it heartbeat. And what we're gonna do is uh, we beat, of course. So I just give it a logger over here. Um, let's, let's do this. Logger factory and make sure we get the logger for the heartbeat class. Let's also make it static. So what we're gonna do is just beating. Now, um, so in order for Spring to run this, this of course needs to be a component. So the class path scanning will just find it under this here. And then I'm a bit lazy right now, so I'm doing a post construct. So as soon as the framework initialized that bean, um, that function is gonna be executed and we should see something in the log. So let's just run this. And as we can see, there's a lot of stuff going on and it's beating. So that, that's cool. So that's the basic task that we're gonna work with in this example. But now, of course, we want to make sure that it's scheduled according to some rules. So in order for us to Get started with scheduling, we need to enable it. So we're gonna do this here. And then I no longer need the post construct, but I can use the add scheduled annotation. So, and at this point I have basically two options. So I can either go with a fixed rate or with a fixed delay. So what's the difference? Let's start with fixed rate because that's what you usually will see in the applications. So a fixed rate means that the task is executed every X. So in that example, I've picked one second. It's always specified in milliseconds. So this task is executed every second. Um, so that's the one option. And then of course, there's another one, which is the fixed delay. And I just messed something up, but it doesn't matter. So the fixed delay is different because this is measured from the end of the current execution to the beginning of the next one. So if you're running a task and it takes a couple of minutes, for example, then that delay would mean that one second after the execution has finished, um, the task is rescheduled. So both can be useful, um, but as I said, we're, let's just start with a fixed rate um, and do this every second. So if all goes well, if I just run this now, we should see the heart beating at every second and we can already see that it's working. All right, that was pretty simple. So, but right now there's an interesting question. If I have a fixed rate of one second, but my task takes much longer than that, uh, what is gonna happen? So what I could do here is I could just sleep for two seconds. So what's gonna happen? Uh, we can just try this out because that's quite easy. Um, we will see that it's now running here and it's running again here. So you can see there are two seconds in between. So that means we have specified a fixed rate for one second, but still it takes two seconds. And the reason is that Spring doesn't schedule multiple tasks of the same job essentially, because that would at some point exhaust our resources. So that means it will always finish the current task before it starts another one. So the duration or the execution time of the actual task determines the rate essentially. And there's something else that can be interesting for you, which is the initial delay. Because so far we've used the fixed rate, but we can specify an initial delay if for whatever reason we don't want to run job right away when the application started. So I can say, 
Let's just wait two seconds before we start scheduling this. So you can see the application has started and it takes two seconds here before the job actually runs and then uh, it still takes two seconds because I'm still sleeping within the function. So far we've been using long values um, to specify the rate, but there's something that's much cooler. Um, there is something that's called fixed rate string. Uh, all I can do here is pretty much the same thing. So, oh no, let me actually stop this and remove the thread sleep because it's really boring. Um, now let me run this. Um, and what we see here, it's, it's doing the same thing as we would expect. So why should we use strings? Because after all, type safety is the best, right? If we can just specify long, why should we use a string? Well, the reason is if we use a string, we can work with expressions. And there's this notion, I'm blanking on the name, but it's a ISO standard for durations. Um, it looks something like this. Um, and what we can do here is uh, specify an interval of one second again. So that's the notion, that's what it looks like. So I'm just running it again and we can see that it's doing what we would expect over here. Um, and this is nice because if we think about expressions, that actually means that we can inject properties over here. So let me do something like this. Let's say heartbeat rate. Uh, I have to escape that because um, Kotlin is not happy um, because it's using the dollar sign. Um, and now let's go to the application properties and just specify the heartbeat rate. Let's make it two seconds again. Um, and back to the application. So what we're gonna use over here now is we inject that expression and that makes it easier to reconfigure something, right? If, if we just hard code the value over here, then it would require us to recompile the application to change the rate um, or any other parameter. So by injecting this as a property, we can change it outside and we just need to restart the application at worst. So if I just run this again, just making sure that this works and it does, we can already see that it's scheduled over here. So that's pretty neat actually. But we can now even take this further using cron expressions. And I'm not going into the full explanation of how they work. Um, I'm gonna link something in the description below. But essentially what they allow you to do is have this kind of syntax where you have like six parameters, which go from second of the day, minute, hour, day of week, day of, no, the year actually. So this expression says, pretty much what we've been doing all along, run this task every second. So it still works, it's kind of boring, but where you would use this usually is if you want to do some housekeeping at a certain time. Like for example, if you want to do something at 2 a.m. every day, um, you could specify this expression and then the job would be scheduled to run at 2 a.m. And now this should bring up the question about the time zone, right? If I just run this like 2 a.m. is not the same over here in Germany as it is over in the United States. So what can we do here? Uh, and we got the, the zone parameter, which you should usually specify because by default Spring would just use whatever is configured on a machine the application is running. So um, Europe Berlin should pretty much work here. Uh, if I run the application now, we shouldn't see anything um, because the job is now scheduled. We can see though that the application is still running. It's not stopping right away because now it has a scheduled job that is um, scheduled for tonight. And this is pretty much all there is to say about scheduling tasks in Spring Boot directly. So I will wrap this up with showing you how to configure the underlying thread pool. In order to configure the underlying thread pool, we need to provide our own configuration. And this is how we're gonna do this. We introduce our own scheduling config, which is using the scheduling configurer. So, uh, there's just one function I'm forced to implement, but I'm doing something else. Since this is a configuration, I need to make sure that it's recognized as configuration by the framework by providing the configuration annotation. And then I can do something like this, I'll provide my own scheduler, and I want this to be an executor service. So I can do executors, new scheduled, sketch it thread pool. So I, I can provide 10 threads as part of this pool 
And usually what you'll have to pay attention to is make sure that the whole thread pool is shut down. And there's the destroy method, which you can use in Spring. Uh, and you can specify whenever the bean is destroyed, that will also invoke the shutdown method on the executor service. However, Spring, as far as I know, is already doing this for you, so you don't have to be explicit about that. So the final thing that we're gonna do is now hook the scheduler into our configuration. So we're using the task, task register and set the scheduler to our scheduler. And that's pretty much it. That's just a little bit of glue code. Um, and now let's just change that back to every second so we can see something. And now let's also lock the name of the thread that's been used. So, I mean, we probably see it already in the lock, but let's just be explicit about it. So that's name beating, and now let's start the application. So we can already see it says pool over here, uh, thread two, I mean, it says the same over here. So we can see, okay, there are at least four threads being used, five now at this point. And that's pretty much what we want. So you can, of course, extend the configuration at this point to your own needs, um, but that pretty much is it when it comes to scheduling tasks with Spring Boot. In an upcoming tutorial, I'm going to talk about how you can schedule tasks using Quartz Scheduler. So you have persistent tasks that you can manage. Um, if you don't want to miss that, just consider subscribing and let me know in the comments below if you want to have other topics covered. So long, thanks for watching, stay healthy and I'll see you in the next video.